Welcome back. Africans have a three to four times higher likelihood of dealing with kidney failure, which has been on the upsurge in recent years. Joining us live in the studio to discuss this matter is Dr. Salihu Ibrahim Kwefa, Chief Consultant Physician, Nephrologist, Wuse District Hospital, Abuja. Welcome to the show. Thank you. All right, I had to take my time. Nephrologist, nephrologist. Yes. <laughs> So, um, straight away, going into the heart of it, what yeah. exactly is kidney failure and at what point can we say it has occurred? Kidney failure is a situation whereby the kidney as an organ fails to do its function okay. of excretion. It has several functions, but the primary function of the kidney is excretion of waste product. Okay. It has also a metabolic function, okay. thereby, you know, uh, 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 um, balancing the, the body mechanisms, yes. the way the body functions, yeah. and also balance the water okay as you take water if it's too much the kidney is get more okay. or you take scanty then you pass scanty urine okay it conserve it okay. so it involves water regulation metabolic regulations as well as excretion of the waste product oh, that wow. the body has finished with and it's just like an exhaust you know okay yeah okay. Of the body. that's very interesting so um i'm reading about kidney failure um uh they say we hear that there is acute and there is chronic kidney failure now first of all when does uh, how does it occur when does kidney failure occur before we go into the acute and the chronic yeah there are various diseases that can lead to kidney failure okay the globally the number one cause of kidney failure is diabetes okay diabetes oh, wow. followed by hypertension Oh, really? Then, yes, hypertension. Then there is a form of kidney disease we we'll call it chronic glomerular nephritis. So technically okay. difficult to mention. <laughs> yeah, yes, but when you think of Africa, yeah. the number one culprit is hypertension, depending on the area in which the study is done. Either it's hypertension or CGN. CGN okay. is a chronic glomerular nephritis. Okay. Then we have diabetes, the third. Then we have okay. obstruction of the outflow, either from prostate enlargement or structure or any other thing that obstructs the outflow of the kidney. So it can also lead to kidney failure. Then we have infections. Number one infection that can lead to kidney failure is HIV. Really? Yeah, HIV infection, yes. In fact, HIV infection is the third leading cause of uh, kidney failure among blacks, African Americans. Oh, it's wow. It's third. Third? Yes, third. That's, that's, that's yes. high. Yeah, that's quite high. Then you have other infections like hepatitis B, like hepatitis C. They don't just affect the liver alone. They also affect the kidney in various ways. So, and then we have drugs and toxins. Toxin means uh, poisons that you take unknowingly, either through herbs, or either through herbs, or through other means. And there are some drugs, most likely pain relievers. Yeah. When, when you take them for a long time, with certain quantity, yeah. it can lead to kidney failure. Interesting. Uh, you mentioned pain relievers, and that's something Nigerians, we like to take a lot. <laughs> now, tell us a bit about that. Yeah. Pain relievers are called analgesics. Okay. So, analgesics when you take them like three to five grams per day yeah. for three to five years yeah. you have chronic kidney disease it's oh, called wow. analgesic nephropathy that means oh, a kidney wow. element from analgesic overuse okay it's not just ordinary taking, taking. Okay. that will lead to it but only taking if you have underlying kidney disease yeah can make it worse wow um <laughs> until you just spoke i didn't understand <laughs> how busy the kidney was uh we thought okay we're just yes, one of those it's, things it's a, it's a very busy organ yeah. because one quarter of whatever the heart pumps out in the form of blood goes to the kidney all right so are there things that predispose us to kidney failure um that we should know about yes as i said if you have diabetes you have hypertension then you have obesity yes. even obesity overweight. obesity yeah, yeah obesity yes obesity then abuse of drugs and toxins you know herbal medications yeah then you have also obstruction all this one can please put you to, and you have like infection, I say HIV, yeah. hepatitis B, hepatitis C, all this can please to kidney, kidney disease, kidney failure. But the number one in Nigeria or Africa is hypertension. Okay. It's hypertension. Okay. Some say, uh, please explain to us the difference between the acute and the uh, chronic. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, kidney failure is the failure of the kidney that occurs abruptly, suddenly, okay. yeah. within days, hours, weeks up to months but it shouldn't be more than three months mm -hmm. the moment the acute kidney failure is see three months it's become chronic okay. so chronic failure that failure that occur when the illness you know remains there for three months and above okay so any kidney disease that lasts more than three months is called chronic less than three months because acute so it's just the duration it's but what it's called to failure acute occur suddenly suddenly within okay. which days it happens yeah it happens but chronic takes its chronic, time to yeah, build it takes up time. and that's probably why it's more more dangerous it's because, more dangerous it's, because it's, acute acute 
you can it can it's potentially reversible okay you can so, but the only thing is that now it has been the research has shown that about 50 percent of patients that even recover from acute so-called recover from yeah. acute, they still have kidney disease going on silently 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 and maybe after 10 years 15 years they come up with chronic kidney disease Okay. Now, we, we know another thing is that we found out that managing kidney disease here seems to be a big deal. It seems to be expensive. It seems to be difficult. Why is this such a problem? Yeah, the issue is that because we, the, the manager or the doctors, yeah. we see patients when they are symptomatic, when they have symptoms. Oh. Kidney disease is in stage, stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4, stage 5. Most patients, they are not symptomatic until stage 4. Or that's 5 stages. By the time they come, they are already showing signs and symptoms of failure. So the only thing you do, you treat it. But oh. you, there are a lot of measures when this disease is seen early, you can institute to either block it or to retard the progression of kidney disease. Okay. And you stop the progression of kidney disease. Okay. Um, speaking as a Nigerian and generally African, we yes. consider investigative medicine to be an expensive venture. I beg, I beg, I beg. It's too expensive. So can you um, talk to us generally about why this is important and what we can do at an early stage? Certain things that may suggest we need to go do a test or we need to see our doctor in that regard. Yeah, there are certain things that everybody, every adult, supposed to be you know, at least once or twice a year. Yeah. You need to know your blood pressure. Okay. You need to know your sugar. Okay. Then you need to measure your urine because most kidney disease can be picked early in the urine. Okay. Urine abnormality, you can pick it. Okay. Then you must also measure the kidney functions to okay. see at what level you are. Okay. If everything is fine, then you continue doing your doing your test. You check for hepatitis B, yeah. check for hepatitis C. If you have B, if you are negative, you can take vaccine for hepatitis B. Okay. If they see that you don't have a vaccine but okay. once you have it you can treat it it's curable it's hepatitis b that is not curable but it's treatable you can take treatment continuously for life wow. that, that is it. so you have to screen screen for hiv then screen to your cholesterol level then screen so many things that can provoke that can promote kidney ailment okay so how often do you think we need to go for regu regular checkups for this kind of thing twice a year once a year at least once a year once a year yes once a year but if somebody can afford it twice a year, every six months you check okay. yourself that'll be fine yes. all right looking to another issue as we've said uh, some studies show that africans suffer more we have a three to four times more likelihood yeah. why is this such a why, why is this such a big issue with us yes we, there are some genetic issues yes that in our makeup we have some genes that promote kidney disease. Okay. This disease actually some of them promote hypertension. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you have hypertensive, if it's not properly controlled, under a long time, you can now develop kidney disease. So mm -hmm. we have a genetic issues. Mm -hmm. And we inherited some genetic abnormalities mm -hmm. from our forefathers. Okay. This abnormality does not come as a as as a, as a random. Okay. We have issues with sleeping sickness okay. in the West African subject in particular. Okay. This means when our forefathers develop abnormal gene. Okay. So if you have that gene, you are protected. Oh. So that gene that, that protects you against sleeping sickness yeah. now makes you vulnerable to kidney disease. Oh, wow. That's... Yes. Okay, I never knew that. No, yeah, it happened. It's not only on skill cell, on, 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 on kidney disease. Okay. Even in malaria, our forefathers developed resistance to malaria by developing sickle cell trait. But now the issue is that sickle cell trait, <laughs> sickle cell disease, <laughs> If you overexpress it, if you are just a carrier, yeah. you are protected against malaria. Yeah. But if you now develop the two genes, now you become sickle cell disease, and now malaria will be very little to you. Okay, this is very complex. No, what <laughs> I, I say. No, I, see, I mean that I, I, I see, never understood how interconnected, yeah, how interconnected. So you see, the issue is, you know, as we are evolving, yeah. let's see. So God has had made it that once you have an illness, yeah. then the people that are inflicted, somehow somehow we develop a mechanism to evade that illness yeah after some time because the humanity must propagate yes you know, yes yeah it must propagate <laughs> that's the design of yeah. the multi it yeah. must propagate yeah so now because malaria kills us so much that our forefathers and that develop sickle cell trait yeah so that's s s s a yeah s a not s s yes so if you have s a you know you are protected against malaria so fine yes. malaria will come Malaria will come and now we are protecting. Mm -hmm. So that you shouldn't do it. Yeah, no if you develop too much, yeah. S, S gene, now it will SS, now malaria again. Okay. 
Interesting. So um, we've talked about how difficult it is to treat hair. Um, two things we want to talk about, things we can do. Number one, to make life easier for our kidneys and to, if we have this, um, what's the treatment pro procedure process? You see, as I said, kidney disease in stages. The only stage that we suddenly see where we see frequently in the hospital is when you are symptomatic. Okay. Because our people, they don't go for checkups. Yes. Yeah. And some diseases, why would they come late? Because most diseases are attributed to supernatural things, or to witchcraft, this African mentality. Mm -hmm. Before now, they seek for help. So by the time they come, they are already overtly symptomatic. Mm. So they are already in stage four or stage five. So that's little can be done other than say, okay, dialyze him or do transplant. But if you come at early six, there are a lot, a lot of mechanisms that can be put into place to protect you. Okay. If you're hypertensive, that hypertension must be treated very well. Okay. If you're diabetic, it will be controlled very well. If you have any serious infection, it can be treated. You should stop taking herbal medication now. You should stop taking pain relievers now. So these are the things that when you do them, then it promotes kidney health and okay. take a lot of water. Which take a lot of water. Yeah, take a lot of water. Okay, what of um, food eating? Are there things that we should try not to eat as much? You've already mentioned herbal medication. Fine. Yeah, or what else? Yeah, at early stage, you don't need to limit any food you take. Okay. Unless if there's evidence that you have metabolic arrangement. Okay. But otherwise, you eat your normal, normal food. Take a lot of food. water. Yeah, take a lot of water. But by the time you go systematic, that's the time now we say, okay, take less protein. Less protein. If you have potential, we say, okay, reduce your salt intake. Mm -hmm. Then we give you medications. Okay. You know, there are a lot of things that we can do to to eliminate the problem. Okay, situation. so it's important that you see your doctor earlier. Yeah, Another yeah. thing we like to talk before we round up is, okay, we find sometimes people travel out and do a kidney transplant when yes. the case is very bad yes. and they come back and after some time you hear cases of the person collapsed from this same thing. Why does this happen? You see, um, before you go for transplant, yeah. you know, we do some tests yeah. to see how closely related to the donor mm -hmm. you are. The closer you are to the donor, the likelihood that can test plan will live longer. Oh, really? Yeah, live longer. Yeah. So that's why the best donor to you is living related donor. Okay. Your brother, your mother, your father, living related. Yeah. So by the time now you have living related, then the kidney half life is about 17 years. It can be up to 30 years. Mm. You understand? Interesting. But, yeah, but if you have living unrelated, somebody who's not related to you, maybe he's your driver, maybe your wife, or maybe your friend, friend want to can give, give you, you one yeah, kidney. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so am I, me who donated that, am I safe with one kidney? Yes. Or I'm safe with one yes. kidney? Yes. Any okay. organ you have two, one is spare. Oh, really? Yes. That's interesting. Yeah, you should know that medically any procedure yeah. that will lead to damage to the person yeah. that's going to assist will not be done. Oh, fantastic. No, it's, you know, it's not done. We, we don't induce sickness in somebody and save somebody, no. Okay, so, so generally, as we round up, Doctor, I'd, yes. I'd like you to just talk talk to our viewers and guests about generally the idea of kidney health, how what they can do. Um, like you mentioned, a lot of us are superstitious. Um, when we feel the symptoms, oh, it's this, it's that, we don't want to take treatment. Just general talk and advice. To you our... see, the, the best advice I can give yeah. people is that kidney disease, early stage, you know, usually is a silent illness. Yes. Unless when you are in the late stage, four or five, because it becomes symptomatic. Mm -hmm. So you don't know. So you must cultivate the habit of regular milk chocolate. There are three things I have in mnemonics. Everybody should know. Yeah. Know your box. B-U-C-S. B-U-C-S. Yeah, okay. box. B stands for blood pressure. Blood pressure? Yes. U stands for urinalysis. Meaning you just go for ordinary urine checkup. Check okay. You can check sugar inside. You okay. can check protein and other things okay. that can suggest that you that have a kidney disease. Problem. Okay. Yes. S stands for sugar level. You have blood okay. sugar level. Okay. To know whether you are diabetes or not. Okay. Then the C is the creatinine. Creatinine mm. is the indirect measure of a kidney function. So know your box, blood pressure, your analysis, C stands for creatinine, and S stands for sugar level in your blood. So if you can do this, wow. then you are done. <laughs> your kidney will be protected. Doctor, thank you very much. I feel like we've been thoroughly, thoroughly <laughs> and, enlightening about this issue, issue and it'll help us uh, deal with our kidneys better and also encourage our loved ones to go out there and get tested often, at, at least once a year. Yeah. So you've heard it from the professional himself. This is not my opinion. At least once a year, do go up and check your kidneys to ensure that you don't have uh, a kidney failure. All right. Thank you very much, doctor. Hey, now the welcome. show will, will continue. So time now to move on. We'll take a break. And when we come back, the show will continue. But before that happens, remember to reach us on our social media handles at lensinafrica, ntai at gmail.com, 
Facebook, Lens and Africa NTAI. Instagram, Lens and Africa NTAI. You can also reach out on WhatsApp. Message only, please. 0901 221 62